quests where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. And my name is Professor Mark Sheriff. And we're two weeks now back, back in the classroom, back in the saddle, hundreds of kids in front of us. I will. How has your first super spreader event been? <laughs> it's been it's been going well. Um, you know, there there's been a couple of times I've had to remind about masks. Um, by remind, I mean point out that someone doesn't have one on their their face. Um, <laughs> only a yeah. couple, thankfully, and and certainly haven't had any of the arguments because I have I have seen many a a YouTube video on public freakout now of students. Oh yeah, deciding that they're going to become the greatest legal scholar of their generation in introductory to chemistry in their freshman year. <laughs> I I don't I haven't seen as much of the arguing at uva at uva i feel like it's much more just the 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 uh parental air uh, eye roll and then mm-hmm. uh going on about their business or my favorite is just when i'll spot someone I'm like masks inside the building please and i see them talking about the mask and then in my peripheries i walk past they talk it back down <laughs> it's yeah. like, well i guess i could expect that one i mean i've had to do it in class a couple times like just to remind everyone it's time to mm-hmm. you have to have your masks on and the way you wear a mask ladies and gentlemen this has to go over your nose and your mouth and then, of course, it's, you know, the people who, like, pull it down. So I got to cough. <clears throat> it's like, wait, wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to cough and sneeze with my mask on. Then it gets all over my face. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, as opposed to all over your neighbor's face. <laughs> it's like, now that we know that COVID is spread by aerosol and you can, if you can smell the alcohol on your neighbor's breath from their frat party they went to the other day, think about that for a moment, but... I mean, I think I'm I'm slightly getting back into it. I think I'm used to wearing pants again. Uh, that was uh, it was a it was a big, <laughs> that was an adjustment. <laughs> it was an adjustment. I, the thing that's still getting to me though is wearing socks and shoes, and not just socks and shoes, but like nice socks that are kind of you know dressy socks, and then shoes that apparently the heels have been replaced with razor blades, because as opposed to wearing my nice comfy, you know running shoes or just sandals or whatever. These suckers are digging into my heel as mm. if it was nobody's business. And it's, it, I, I come home and I'm like, wait a minute. Why was I, why was I doing this? I, I don't know. I need comfier shoes. Mm. In all fairness, I did. I, my, my wife said, well, they're new shoes. And I was like, well, they were new in, they were new when I got them for Christmas in 2019. But to be fair, I didn't get a chance, much of a chance to break them yeah. in past that point. Yeah, so, no, not um, a lot of not a lot of breaking in opportunities. Not not a not a, well. I mean, I guess I could have been wearing them about the house, but you know, is it those as opposed to just slippers or whatever? But you know, all in all, I think it's been it's been going fairly well. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're here for questions. We're here we for are. questions and answers. Is there anything that's tickling your mind first? Anything that that well, that or, or I should lead. What do you, no, what do you no, got? Um, so I do have one that's kind of fun off the bat, and it's not not a yet it's not a correct or incorrect answer question. It's subjective. Um, most of the student evaluations we get tend to be very positive. The the two of us, I know that that's the case for two of us. But here's a question: well, <laughs> What is the worst? Rate my professor. Let's not go there right now. No, but, no, okay. Avoiding rape. What is the worst student evaluation you have ever received? The comments that you'd be willing to share. <gasps> Okay, so uh, I paused for a second. I went and found them because apparently this one semester, I don't know what I was doing or what I was doing to these kids. And it's what's funny is it's the same class that we're teach that Will and I are teaching right now. Um, uh, same 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 course topic. Um, but so I'll read through it. I'll, I'll skip a little bit of it. But this is straight out of this was what was submitted to my to my department. <laughs> <laughs> Selecting courses in the CS department is like walking through a minefield of geniuses. For, for, fortunately, uh, sometimes you're called upon to perform a service to your country and your sense of honor and duty. Oh my God, duty. They actually put that. And whatnot tickles your conscience until you man up and take a ride on the bullet train to fulfill your degree requirements. I'll be honest, it feels good to be this nice since it feels a little bit praising the weird kid on the playground since, you know, even doing simple things can be difficult for them. Like, where are you going this is, with this? Is, is, is this is this the new novel coming out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a list of everything we had to rely on for Sheriff's projects. The Bluetooth dongle. <laughs> I said dongle. They put this in evaluation. They wrote that in there, just for clarity. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
the temple, the corridor. Ha ha, I'd temple your corridor with my dongle. I mean, what the <laughs> student does this? Um, fortunately, this configuration balances well with the other three members of the group. They're bu- busy fiercely evaluating the critical risks our corporation faces and the reliability of the Olsen basement electrical grid for our weekly report. Bless Cheerwine. Wait, what? But really, there should be a third lecture hour during the week for the presentations. We wouldn't spend more of our half a time doing this. I'm not sure what's going on with Sheriff's personal life, but he needs to leave those issues at home and not take his frustrations out on his students. It's like, wow. what did I do to this poor child? <laughs> do you know what's even funnier? Mm-hmm. Th- this evaluation came from the same semester that Professor Graham, who is now our colleague... Teaching with us at UVA, it came from his semester when he took the class with me when he was an undergrad. (laughs) So we have, like, eyewitness evidence, if we wanted to, to apparently know just how horrible a person I was back then. (laughs) I don't know. Now, I'm going to put in here that my my favorite evaluation I've ever had, you didn't ask, but I'm going to put it in there. It was just one line. Sheriff is a BAMF. B-A-M-F. Yes. Now... For those of you that don't know what B-A-M-F stands for, it's bad, a, mother, and at the time... Banana, my, apples, mangoes, or fruit. That's what that's I think That's right. That's, yeah. that's what it has to be. And um, first, very nice compliment. I appreciated it very much to be called a bad, you know, to be called that. But at the time, my department chair... 65-year-old um, uh, individual that let's just say not not hip with the lingo and to try and explain that during my performance <laughs> review <laughs> was a challenge so anyway there's there's my favorite one i've had that one just queued like that one for some reason just lives rent free in my mind and i to this day have no idea what i was doing so mine uh, came from a situation where a, uh, it's one of those where you, of, of course, you don't know who submitted this evaluation, but you know who submitted but this evaluation. But you know who submitted, yeah. So there was a student uh, in, in my intro programming classes at my, uh, my previous job at the University of Pennsylvania, who I caught cheating, submitting an identical version of a file that another student submitted last year, which had enough weird things in it that even though the assignments are relatively simple, kind of some weird approaches, lack of comments, name removed, etc., but but white space was there where comments used to have been, right? Mm. That I was pretty convinced this student was cheating. And while I don't know this student wrote this comment, I'm pretty sure they did because they continued to... They, they immediately accepted uh, at, at, at Penn, there's an Office of Student Conduct, they immediately accepted the Office of Student Conduct offer for admitting responsibility because there were consequences if they didn't and later found to have been responsible. But they spent the rest of the semester visiting every single office hours nearly and arguing with me about it. That sounds and fun. Anyway, the comment reads, um, this professor said I cheated. I have never cheated. I'm a moral individual. What I do know is that this professor must be an angry little man. Hang on, here it comes. Ready? Okay. Break, break. I don't believe in a hell, but if there is Wait, one... Wait, what? Okay. I don't, I don't believe in a hell, but if there is one, it is where I believe this professor will spend eternity alone. And it's that last word that always gets me. Because, what? like, <laughs> not even Stalin? Not even... <laughs> like, just me. You know, cultural revolution, I, yeah, but I wrote a student up for cheating. Like, mm, obviously. You know, in, in hell alone. Yeah, it's that last word that's always, always alone. just gotten to me. Yeah. And, I, and, and so I, that that is one that, when a performance evaluation came up, they mentioned, <laughs> hey, overall your evaluations are great. Do you know what happened here? <laughs> you know, there's there's something about it being in a profession where 
every person is encouraged or all, or sometimes bribed to write comments about you that are then read up the up the chain yeah. every semester and also posted randomly on the internet depending on whether you're it's rate my professor or whatever local thing that you might have it is it it has taken years mm. to develop any sort of thick skin to that and i'm still not quite there but yeah um, oh. Well, so what I will say, this is absolutely true, in in my applications at UVA, because my reviews in that class were otherwise very stellar, that was in the, the that was in the set of reviews I sent to UVA. <laughs> as just a, as just a flex, it's like, you're going to no, hire no, no, me no, anyway, no, look no, at this it was one. Just because the, the whole semester, I mean, you know, it was 300 students, right? So, I mean, yeah. 200 some reviews in there, most of them having some type of comment so i'm like okay well you know i i need student evaluations that are that are strong these are mostly positive <laughs> <laughs> while we're on the topic of cheating cases i don't know if i've told you this one before I, but my favorite cheating case isn't even what the cheating case was it was the resolution of the cheating mm -hmm. case and i think this was just it was a dumb one it was just i caught some you know submitted the same file you know it's not even an interesting one i have interesting ones we can do that one another time but the resolution is the one of this one is the one that gets me so this kid got put on i think they did a conscientious retraction or something like that so they got booted for a semester or something like that so this happened you know early on in their career and then fourth year rolls around for this kid, I, I have, you know, time has passed, whatever. And a kid knocks on my door uh, and says, Professor Sheriff, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah, sure. What? Yeah, come on. What's up? And he comes in. He's like, I just wanted to thank you. When I was in your class, you caught me cheating and I went before honor and I, I changed my ways and now I'm going to graduate. And now here is this. And he walks back out of my office and then comes back in with a painting of a child playing video games, hanging out with Mario and Link and Kirby and the whole crew. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I have painted this for you. And I, thanks. What do I do with this? <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> right, this, yeah. is bef this is before I had children, child, I only have one child. This is before I had a child. So it's not like I had, you know, other random artwork from kids around my office and now I have this painting and for the longest time I just left it behind my door and I'd close my door and you know meeting with a student or someone and they turn around they'd see it and they go what the hell is that and I'm like oh it's a painting I got from a student that cheated on a test and I don't know what to do with it well now what I've done is I've hung it in a spot prominently so in every zoom call from my office you cannot miss it <laughs> So now it's just a flex. Uh, so I'll have to show it to you sometime. I think, I think I've seen it because I started, it started ringing a bell a little bit when, when you were talking about it. I'm like, have I seen that? Yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, hey, hey, how about we talk about just like a little piece of technology that people might be interested in or, or okay. you know, you know, one of those things. I, I need a, I need a, a name for a segment where it's just like, let's, Let's explore. Let's learn. The more you know, that one's taken. I need to think of something better. For some reason today, I have no idea why, but I started thinking about VHS versus Betamax. Okay. And I don't, I'm not really sure what, <laughs> what, what happened there. But then I was thinking about VHS versus Did you versus accidentally Bet time travel to the late I, 70s and early uh, 80s? Uh, you know, you're, you're stuck in your office. Um, COVID mind does crazy things. But then I was also thinking about what happened between you know, HD DVD and Blu-ray right. and that we have seen this repeat at least a couple times now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the question, like, where do formats come from? Well, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like babies. Where, where, where do formats come from? Well, and, when, when an audio file loves a video file very much, they give each other a very special hug. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's when, when one company loves royalties very oh, well, that, that, that too <laughs> that too yeah it gives it a so so the vhs versus the betamax thing um do you do you know the legend of why one of them won the, the um so I, I i believe i know the popular story of why vhs was the winner i'm not sure if i'm if i should say it since we're trying uh, to be a not explicit podcast, I don't see how it's explicit to say that uh, there there is the the urban legend 
that the pornography industry adopted VHS over right. Betamax and yes. that they are the ones that pushed it over the edge because they, you know, because of all the, that money being spent. Mm-hmm. And there was a quote from a from a executive from uh, Vivid Entertainment, which was a producer at the time. Right. Um, and, and this has since been kind of debunked. I mean, the the at the end of the day, the fact that a particular genre of film, I let's mm-hmm. just say, I suppose, um, adopted one format is just emblematic of the fact that most of the genres of film and most of the producers of film ended up selecting between the two. Because if you look at between VHS and beta, beta was higher quality, period. Mm-hmm. It, 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 um, it just had higher quality picture. It stored video better. It stored audio better. It was just better. But VHS was cheaper. And, you know, in the, in the 80s, as mm-hmm. this, this technology was coming out, or 70s and 80s when this technology was coming out, that was a big push. The second big push was VHS, because it was lower quality, well, it turns out they just could put more spool on there. Right. And they could put more time on there. They could put right. 120 minutes as opposed to 60 minutes. Right. And that was a big thing for the different um, for movies. Yeah. For movies. So I was thinking about that and I was like, oh, that's interesting because I actually had a Betamax player just because I bought it from a um, a flea market because I wanted to use the TV tuner so I could watch television mm-hmm. on my Commodore 64 monitor, which sounds like really the epitome of nerd i am old now right um i used to pay to max to do <laughs> tv on a Sommeter 64 monitor but hd dvd versus blu-ray was kind of even more interesting because it also had the separation between microsoft right who's and behind hd dvd right and blu-ray who had sony and, and a whole bunch of other people behind it First off, I didn't even know that Blu-ray was named Blu-ray because literally because of the blue ray, the laser. Mm. It was a it's a blue diode ray, laser with a lower wavelength, which made it so that you could just literally shove more stuff onto a disc because, you know, a Blu-ray disc isn't physically any different in size than a CD or DVD. It was just the the laser that was being used was allowed to allow it to to store a lot more information on it. So, um did you ever have, did, do you remember the HD DVD versus Blu-ray? Did you yeah. pick a format at the time? Well, so I actually, I didn't pick a format for movies because I didn't have a player for either. Um, mm-hmm. Except I did eventually have an Xbox 360, but mm-hmm. I was still, for movies, if I bought movies, I was buying DVDs because that was what, and 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 this is that that's what Blockbuster had. Um, so Blockbuster would sell their movies, you know, uh, that that were no longer popular to rent. You know, it's like buy four movies, get twenty dollars, or for buy buy four movies at four twenty dollars. Like, and so most of the movies I had were still DVDs. Uh, I mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't think I actually had a Blu-ray until I bought the um, the Cornetto trilogy on Blu-ray, which is. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. That that oh group. that yeah. cinematic um, masterpiece. But most people I know who had a, a high definition video machine had a Blu-ray player. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that if it was dedicated, uh, not not counting PS3. Of course. I mean, so we're gonna get to that. So so the interesting thing here. I mean, so what it, you know, technologically there were some things that one was doing as opposed mm-hmm. to the other, which was very, it was, was interesting. So for instance, Blu-ray was using actually a Java programming layer as uh-huh. far as for, for managing some of the, the media on it, which a lot of people liked because Java was a, uh, an open language and, and an HD DVD wasn't. Um, uh, it was using something called HDI, which was a proprietary system for Microsoft. And then um, Blu-ray had more support for things like region encoding, which mm-hmm. certainly a lot of movie producers right. certainly NTSC care about. NTSC versus PAL, for example. Right. Um, but the other thing is, is that at the end of the day, when the, the sides were lining up, it sounds like almost like a Captain America Civil War. Listen to who's on either side of this. On the Blu-ray side was Hitachi, LG, Panasonic, Pioneer, Philips, Samsung, Sharp, and Sony. 
On the HDDVD side, you had Toshiba, NEC, Sanyo, Microsoft, RCA, and Intel. I mean, that was, mm-hmm. that's a pretty impressive competing right. sides for which one's going to happen or which one is going is going to win out in the end. So there for a while, they were pitching these to all the different um uh movie studios and it it went even crazier. So HD DVD uh garnered support from Universal, Paramount and Warner Brothers mm-hmm. and Blu-ray was Sony, Disney and 20th Century Fox. Mm-hmm. So again, we <laughs> we have quite the standoff between these two, you know, these two formats and worth one knowing, of the thi- worth, worth noting by the way at the moment that Disney now owns 20th Century Fox. Oh sure. Oh well, of course all the mergers and that was, and that was this is obviously well before that, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um what is interesting though is when the um the the discs became available. I actually had an HD DVD player because it was you bought the the mm-hmm. you, you could buy the attachment for the Xbox 360 and they gave you five free movies. So I randomly have some of the Harry Potter <laughs> series Wait, so on it, HD it DVD. You couldn't play them natively. You had to get an attachment. I I you don't get, know. I didn't know that. Yeah, the 360 did not have an HD DVD built in. You had to get but an the external PS3 drive. The PS3 could natively play Blu-ray. Correct. And as a matter of fact, that was one of the things that that happened. So Sony learned their lesson with Betamax. Mm-hmm. Sony was the big proponent of Betamax. Sony is really good at making formats no one wants to use anymore, right? Mini disc, mm-hmm. a memory stick. I mean, we there so Sony loves making random, you know, formats of uh, of discs and memory chips mm-hmm. and everything that no one will ever be able to use. But for Blu-ray or for Betamax, excuse me, um they focused on, you know, quality player, which in general Betamax players were higher quality. Um, the quality of the video, things like that. And like, people will love this. And it was more expensive and no one bought it. So Sony said, well, screw that. We're putting it in the PlayStation 3 and selling it in the video game system. Mm-hmm. And what happened was Blockbuster, of course, at the time, Blockbuster was still there. Right. And yeah. Blockbuster was doing uh, an- an- analytics. Who was renting HD DVD and who was renting Blu-ray? How much of each was being rented uh, for the same movies? And um, in June... 2007, um, Blu-ray became the exclusive uh, high-definition format for Blockbuster after they found that 70% total of HD rentals from all of their stores were Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So they just made the move at that point. At that point, you know, yeah. I mean, the snowball was yeah. running downhill. Blockbuster and Blu-ray was still really big not that long ago, too. I mean, this was... Yeah, you know, I was still going and buying movies there in like 2008, 2009, and it was still very much alive. Oh, okay. My favorite my favorite memories of Blockbuster still are mm. winning the store Blockbuster video game championship. Ooh. And I, I yeah. believe it was 1997. I I won a free rental every month for a year. Nice. It was very nice, except we'd already moved to to a different city, so I actually had to drive an hour and a half to go use my frame rentals at that particular store. Um, Weren't but, you paying more on gas anymore? Hey, at that point, I was just very proud yeah. of it. I, I I believe the certificate is in my office. I'm happy to show nice. that off about my my elite gaming skills, which I think at the time, the game that I had to win, it was the original Donkey Kong Country, mm-hmm. and I think Clay Fighters was also mm-hmm. in it. Yeah. Good one, one, thing anyway. to, one, one thing to note while we're on the topic uh, of Blockbuster is that while you mentioned VHS were cheaper earlier, when they were being sold in the early 80s, they were charging mm-hmm. like $100 for a VHS. Like literally $100 in 1980s dollars. Because they're like, which well, is like 2 million. Yeah, yeah, roughly, give or take. Which the reason they were doing that was like, well, look, they can watch it anytime they want. Otherwise, they'd have to pay to go to the movies. So, you know, ultimately, it's like, Going, being able to go to the movies like 20 times and that's and you know you're going to watch this more than 20 times if you're buying it and so that's that gave rise to a lot of the video stores was just how expensive vhs tapes were um and, that makes and sense so you know the video store would buy it rent it out ton times <laughs> so of course the you- movie companies tried to shut down video stores and that was the whole thing anyway so are, are you still are, are you a physical media person now i mean you know we've moved mm-hmm. past this discussion i mean now we have arguments about file formats but right. you know 
what, what where you sit on this are you do you with, like to have the physical library that you can look at or I, I do um so i actually you know when it comes to books especially i like to have the physical book i i did try reading kindle for a while i find that Having the physical book in my hand, I prefer that to even having an e-reader in my hand. Um, with video games, I prefer to fi- buy the physical media, albeit a lot of that is buying games used. Um, you know, for the for the cheaper price. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, plus, I'm not going to have time to play them anyway, so I might as well pay as little as possible. Uh, <laughs> but see, I- with movies, oh, I actually i. With with movies and, and TV shows, I have mostly switched to streaming services. On the rare occasion, I do like buy a movie, you know, not renting, but explicitly buying. I anymore do find myself buying digital. I I've gone basically completely digital in mm. in all ways, and and for me, it, again, in my office, I now have at 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 UVA. I have most of my video game collection in my office there because I had to get it out of the house. So I had to go put it somewhere because I have all. So I have shelves of like PS2, PS1, mm-hmm. Xbox, Wii, GameCube, regular, the original Nintendo, SNES, 3D, all of this in my office at UVA right now. And the convenience, particularly with a video game system like the Switch where I just have everything there mm-hmm. that whenever I have to switch out a game cartridge on the switch, I am mad. I'm mm-hmm. like I, the, the, the switch cartridge itself is the size of yeah. my thumbnail. And I don't want to lose the silly thing as far right. as movies go, particularly something like Sammy loves her, um, uh, her, loves her some Daniel tiger. Daniel tiger is amazing is wonderful. Mm-hmm. You know, he's great. And I want to be able to just open up Amazon Prime Video. Just go right, down, yeah. kid. I don't want to have to load a DVD. I don't have to move anything. I just want to say, and she gets an episode she watches. She's like, oh, I want, oh, here's a new season. Okay, hit a button, $10. Okay, there's the next season. Mm-hmm. Keep going, kid. I need to finish cooking dinner. So uh, with books, I definitely feel that. I'm married to a librarian. I mean, I, I, you know, we have a thing about, we have a lot of books in our house. We have mm-hmm. a lot of books in our house. Um. But for me, it's turned into the convenience of being able to read anywhere. If I'm like in a line and I'm mm-hmm. working on, a, you know, I'm working through a book, I can just literally pull out my phone and finish it. Yeah. Um, being able to change the, the font size, the text size. I actually have a picture. Um, the Raymond Feist, who is one of my favorite fantasy authors, mm-hmm. um, the Magician series. I had a picture of the first book in the series and the, the series is, I don't know, 20 20 or 30 books long. Right. It, it, the first book came out in the mid eighties and the last book came out three years ago, four years ago. And I have the cover of, I have the first book in one hand and I have my f- iPhone in my other hand that has the cover of the right. other book. Like here's where I've come. So there, I will say there's actually more than a few books where I have, if it's a particularly long series. So specifically the two I've done this with are a song of ice and fire, which is game mm-hmm. of Thrones. And the Malazan Book of the Fallen, which is like A Song of Ice and Fire on crack. Um, <laughs> I actually have both an e-reader version and the book version. And that was an intentional decision because the books are big. Uh, like some of the some of the later Malazan Book of the Fallen books are like 1400 pages long. And it's just not easy to fit into like a laptop bag or, or a briefcase or something if I'm traveling in a plane. So I, I have, I have done that. Is it a waste of money? Absolutely. That's <laughs> um, do I recommend that? No, no, you are supporting your favorite creators. Yeah. To think yeah. of it that way. I, but I also do like to buy a book series when I really like it. Even if I started reading at the library, uh, an example of this is uh, I just started reading the wheel of time series and I read about half the first book from the library. I, I finally came up. And uh, now there's this read-along thread on Reddit. I went and bought all the hardback books, because usually when I can, I like to buy hardbacks so they last long. Mm. I go so far as to laminate them. I'm insane. Anyway. I'm married to a librarian. I've seen crazier things done to keep books um, in in pristine quality. So, shared. I, I've shelved my favorite. <laughs> Did you have a... 
Do you have a, uh, a question you want to move to? We can so, move so off So we formats. mentioned talking about video game consoles. Um, I, I'm a fan. Why don't console games give extensive graphic settings in their games? So if you've ever opened a game on PC, typically there's very extensive graphic options. Very extensive. Very extensive sometimes. Um, in fact, when a PC game doesn't have extension, extensive graphics options, it usually gets bad reviews as a result of that. That's very true. Yet it gets on panned. on console, even with the newer consoles, there's often very little beyond just brightness. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I talked about control not that long ago. I actually did a video when we were talking about ray tracing and how it had a setting for ray tracing on and ray tracing off. And that was it. Mm-hmm. So why don't consoles give more flexibility more routinely? There's a there's a joke here about about PC gamers being people uh, master tweakers of all the games and want to mm-hmm. get it exactly the way we want to. And why would we ever why would we ever stoop down to giving the masses who play those consoles any mm-hmm. options? But the baseline is is that. Basically, every console in a particular generation is the same. It's yeah. exactly the same, and so you can you can build your you can build your game to know exactly what it is. But every single PC is different. Yeah, all of them because they are either came from different manufacturers or you've cobbled it together from whatever. And so you have to be able to put those settings in there for PCs because if you say, "Oh, this runs on PC," well, okay, great. A PC could be, you know. A core i9 with 32 gigs of RAM and dual GTX 3080 cards that could, you know, simulate 30, anything. 30, 3080 cards are, 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 are fake, like Santa Claus. They're not yeah. real. <laughs> they're, they're, your parents just made them up to make sure you're good around the holidays. No! They're, they're, they're not real. Like the PS5. Um, I actually, no, you, I do have a PS5. Exactly. Yeah, they're easier um, to get now. But... You know, there are some people who are like, well, I want to play this on my two hundred dollar Dell laptop. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> right. Yeah, part part of that is just the variability. But also, I mean, e- even even within the console, they could still give users options like trading off frame rate and performance. And we're seeing more of that specifically with the PS5. Uh performance True. meaning not frame rate, but things like graphical flourishes like ray tracing, etc. And we are seeing that now, but even those little flourishes are still relatively new just as a whole, not just new to consoles. I wonder if we need more of those there, though, for accessibility reasons, for people that might be sensitive to light or sensitive to motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, my my wife can't even watch me play Animal Crossing. I don't know if there's really much can be done for her. But, you know, if there's too much motion, like reflection or something like that, that's really getting someone's eyeballs going all funky mm-hmm. pants, then, you know, that could be something to, to consider. I mean, in the grand scheme of prioritizing features for games, eh? Well, I, I, I actually, I will say that there has been a lot more emphasis on accessibility lately. I, I have That's noticed. In, in gaming, especially. Um, obviously, you're, you're going to have people resisting that you know the 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 get good bro mentality Mm -hmm. um which especially is going to be there in games like in the dark souls family um but for example ratchet and clank has uh ratchet and clank rift apart which is the the newest game in that series for ps5 has uh, just a buffet of accessibility options that even include things like turning off you, you if you want to you can turn off your character actually being able to die because you just want to play the game and have fun. Yeah. You may, you may have kids, you know, who, you know, okay, they're going to jump off the ledge. Well, rather than restarting the level, just a bubble forms, lifts them, drops them right back there. Uh, we saw this with super Mario Odyssey, how there's the uh, assist mode where it actually tells people where to go, you know, so not just appealing to kids, but there's also things like in control, which is a, a notorious is actually a difficult game. My wife, can attest to how much I was like, you know, shouting obscenities at at what I felt were cheap deaths during the game. I could have turned those off. I could have, and there was actually there was one boss fight that was in the DLC that I I I spent literally hours trying to beat and couldn't. And just to see the end of the story, 
I turned on God mode, which was built in just so I could clear it. But that's useful for accessibility from people who, you know, especially with Control being a very Twitch-heavy game, they may not have mobility for any number of reasons in their hand. Um, they may have trouble seeing some of the projectiles just from, from a color perspective. And so, yeah, it, it's... I, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think, especially as games are very heavily story-driven anymore, you know, mm -hmm. what kept me playing Control wasn't how hard the game was, although I will say I actually enjoyed the difficulty, but it was because it was a really cool story and a really cool setting and a really cool universe that they built with, in my mind, somewhat interesting characters. <laughs> Well, it, yeah. all of that really speaks to, though, the notion how we have changed the way we consume gaming mm. or, or interact with gaming. I mean, in the, right. in the long, long ago in the way back time, when we had basic arcade games, you know, it was we had to, quote unquote, program in cheap death. We had to program in something to force you to keep putting in quarters in the right. machine. So we moved past that. And now we have the games at home. But then there's limited amount of memory we can put on an NES cartridge yeah. or a Super NES cartridge or or even the way we wanted to to you know deal with the game. I mean there was difficulty levels we could program in, mm -hmm. but even then there wasn't you know it wasn't a ton of difference. Move forward to today where there is so much focus and rightfully so on the consumer has purchased a product for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. We want them to have a positive experience. We put a ton of time into mm -hmm. building this experience. It's like going into a movie kind of and watching the first 10 minutes and you're like, you know, Oh, I guess I'll just stop or something like that. But I really kind of want to know what happens at the end. Mm -hmm. So in a movie you might rent it and you, like, you know, fast right. forward to the end. No one's stopping you from doing that with right. a movie. If you just want to see the scenes you want to see same thing with a game. Now, if you're spending $60 on a box copy of a game or mm -hmm. a digital copy. In, in my particular case, you, you want to get what you can out of that money that you spent. So sure. If yeah. you want to just go hog wild, turn on God mode, just mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Yeah. Programmers should allow for that. I would say Sony first party games have actually been really good with that. Um, Microsoft, some of their hardware tools are just exceptional. Uh, like the 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 accessibility controllers. Oh, that thing is awesome. They have a bunch of customizable peripherals, things like foot pedals, um, things like you know, just a large dial that you can either use as like a joystick just by moving or customize it. Um, so I I think that's very much a positive change for game for gaming. the The other thing too is you know in in the NES and Super Nintendo, era, a lot of games were arbitrarily padded with intentional difficulty. So you couldn't beat them in a weekend because that was when renting games was kind of at its peak. Yeah. So. So again, yes. Yeah, so so monetary reasons right there. Right. We don't see as you know yeah. as much of that now. Hey, can I ask you probably the most specific question I've seen? Okay, go ahead. This comes from no stupid questions on Reddit. Here's the question: Car crash eight twenty nine twenty one westbound I seventy Utah fifty three miles west of Green River. I'd like to know if anyone knows or is the person who called nine one one on the morning of eight twenty nine for a Chevy Suburban that rolled and found the driver ejected from the vehicle. I'm looking to thank you. You saved my boyfriend's life. Art. No, sorry, I wasn't. I, I wasn't there. That wasn't me. <laughs> but I mean, kudos to that person. <laughs> kudos to that person. And uh, that, that is know, definitely the most specific question that, we will ever ever answer on this podcast. And what's interesting is I, I, I look through here, mm -hmm. and the, the, again, this is on No Stupid Questions. First off, bless the person who thought they could post on No Stupid Questions on Reddit and get this one particularly answered. Uh, you know, people chimed in with, with things like, you know, maybe you should post on, like, the local Facebook group, if right, you could yeah. find that, or something along those lines. But there's actually some pretty helpful answers here for people who are 911 dispatchers who say, you know, there's public records of things like this. Give it a day or so. You can call the local police office or the office and you might actually be able to get information about that. Um, but still, I was like. Wow. OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about one more one more silly one, which actually we might go down this path anyway. Um, for I, I'm going to preface this with a question. What cars have you owned slash driven in your lifetime? 
Uh, okay, so the first car that I that I drove was a roughly two th- year two thousand Honda Accord. That was okay. the family car, which I learned to drive in in an empty parking lot. Um, the first vehicle that I drove extensively was another family car we had, which was a Toyota 4Runner, um, which was much older. Because, uh, of course, I didn't get to drive the newer car with the nicer interior to, to my high-stakes job at Wendy's. <laughs> um, the first car that I like owned and, and my dad gave it to me was a 2000 Nissan Frontier uh which was a pickup truck with real rear wheel drive and i Ooh. lived in northern indiana at this point so i just couldn't go anywhere in the winter cuz think oh pickup truck that's going to it's going to be great winter no cuz it was only rear wheel drive rear wheel drive in a pickup, pickup truck, truck. That's an yeah. interesting combo. So, so you know, do they put it together the backwards? Is on the, is on the opposite side. Yeah, so yeah, I, that's I literally just couldn't drive. Like if there was if there was significant snow on the road, there was a period we had like three feet of snow over the course of like a day, and I couldn't. And then the plows came, and so there was like a wall of like six feet wall of ice. Like I felt like I was in Game of Thrones, and wild <laughs> things were going to climb over it onto my property. Right, I could. For two weeks, I couldn't get my truck out. My my roommate who had parked in the street were able to dig them out, but I actually couldn't. Once we dug the wall out, I couldn't back up because there was just this little tiny rut. Car the truck wouldn't move. My current vehicle is a Ford Fiesta, which has all the transmission problems those have. But I bought it at the height of gas prices, and I actually like it. Tiny, but it, it's effective. I, I learned to drive on a 1986 Plymouth Voyager minivan. Mm-hmm. Drove that for for quite a while. The first, then are, are we we got a Saturn. I don't know if you remember Saturns. Yes. They were you know the plastic cars. That one actually the vehicle melted. It was in an accident. <laughs> it was in an accident, and then was at the uh, was at a was at a tow shop, and another car caught fire somehow next to it, and it literally melted. We have yeah. pictures of the bumper that just like the plastic dripped. And so that was nice. That car. Was great. Um, the first car I purchased was a, I think it was a 1992 Pontiac Grand Am, which had a leak in, a leak in that water could get in, and so whenever the, whenever uh, in the winter if there was rain, there literally would be ice, like an ice in rink the car, in yeah. the back seat. Oh, yeah, and that was always that was always great fun. Um, but uh, you know now driving you know civics and things like that but the question from no stupid questions that leads into this is is it just me or do cars look a lot more pissed off than they used to (laughs) so uh, yes actually (laughs) yes i i I actually think they do my my, my ford fiesta looks kind of like it's gritting its teeth yeah I, I I read this question. I thought about, for instance, like Teslas or things like that. I'm like, yeah, they do look kind of just kind of intense. Just like, mm-hmm. yeah, get out of the way. I'm coming through with my angry tea tooth that I'm just going to drive right through. Um, is it just me or they seem like they're just looking a lot more angry lately? Um, and of course, the, the, the answers here talking about that. um it's an American thing that if you look at the mm. grill designs for the American versions of various cars, they tend to look more aggressive yeah. than the grill designs of European the countries. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I, I, was, I was thinking about that. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Cars do look angry. And I, there was nothing angry about my 1986 Plymouth Voyager minivan. It was uh, it was it was a party wagon that that was just it was. It's the happy, so cool, happy little van. Yeah, it never uh, well, got into crashes. Like, it got into happy little accidents. So, okay. In all fairness, the Pontiac was the one that got the name, the Happy Mobile, uh, because the person that I bought it from, um, I was went, happy I, she they came, sold it to. Oh you. no 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 no! She came. She came by. She was a friend from from high school. Was actually at college with me, and uh, she after she sold me the car, um, she came by. And I was sitting with some, with some other high school friends 
And she said, oh, how's the car going? Are you enjoying it? And I said, oh, yeah, it's great. She said, oh, yeah, I have some really good memories from the backseat of that car. And then walked off. <laughs> and I was like, ah, mental. No, did not need that. Thank you. <laughs> and so my friends just looked at me and said, we're calling that the Happy Mobile now. And I was like, oh, great. Thank you. And it just got it got truncated to Happy. The car's name was Happy. Fair enough. God bless Happy. Well. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us for yet another episode of Regrade Request. Wonderful to have you as we continue back into the wonderful world of in-person <sighs> spreader events. I mean, classes. So um, if you have an opportunity to leave us a review on the podcast service of your choice, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, whatever it might be, we very much appreciate any and all feedback that you give us. We appreciate every single download from all of our wonderful listeners. Tell a friend, tell someone, I don't know. It'd be great to keep talking to more people because we're having fun doing it. Um, so if you have anything, that a question that you have found that you would like us to answer, feel free to email us hosts at regraderequest.com or you can go to regraderequest.com or find our podcast on Anchor FM where there's a button that you can record and be the first person to record an audio message <laughs> for us to answer on the show. For, for myself and for, for Professor Will McBurney, take care, be safe, and watch for Fallen Goats. Especially especially don't hit them with your angry cars. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably an achievement in Go Simulator. Or, or your simulator. happy cars, really. You just, or your ha uh, happy cars. That car died soon.